What makes this clock such a great project is how great it looks compared to how easy it is to build. And I want to show you what I mean here with the clock body. So I'm just going to pull out the clock face and the drawer. And you can see that the body is made up of a pair of sides and they're joined by a divider. And all that's sandwiched between a built up top and a bottom that has a molded edge. Then to provide a registration point for the clock face in the drawer, I've added some simple stops to the inside of the sides. I started by cutting all the parts that I need for the clock body to size over here at the table saw. So I have the parts that I need for the built up top and bottom, as well as the sides. Now what I'm going to do now is cut a groove in the sides that will hold the stops that I talked about a little earlier. To do that, I've installed a 3 8 inch dado blade in the table saw and positioned the rip fence to make a cut. Now I'll use a push block to guide the workpiece across the blade for a nice consistent cut. Cutting this groove takes care of the joinery for the clock body, but before I can assemble it, I still need to create a cove profile on the molded pieces, and I'll do that at the router table. Routing the cove profile on the top and bottom pieces for the clock body is actually a pretty simple detail, but there are a couple of things to keep in mind in order to get the best results. The first is to realize that a cove profile like this is actually a pretty deep cut, so you don't want to route the profile in one pass. Instead, I like to do it in two or three passes. And in, to do that, I've installed the cove bit in the router table and then raised it to its final height. Then, I've brought the router table fence forward so that only a small portion of the bit is exposed. The other thing you want to keep in mind is to prevent tear out on the workpiece, which could spoil the look of the molding profile. And the solution to that is to use a backer board like this. Now this is especially true when you're routing across the end grain of the piece. The backer board is going to support the wood fibers as it goes across the bit to stop tear out. So now I'm ready to make the cut. Routing the cove profile begins by making a shallow cut across one end and then the other end and finally along the long side. Then I can reposition the fence to make a slightly deeper cut. With all the parts ready, I can start assembling the clock body. Now even though this is a small project, there are actually a lot of parts, so it's a good idea to do things in stages. So I'm going to run through what the process is to assemble the clock body. I'm going to start that by gluing in the stops into the grooves that I cut in the sides earlier. The long upper stop is used to hold the clock face. Then at the bottom of the side is a smaller stop, and that's actually going to act as a stop for the drawer at the bottom of the clock. Now you can see what I'm talking about here in the finished clock, where the long upper piece is and then the short lower piece. Now right behind that lower piece, I'm going to glue in a thin drawer guide, and that's going to fit right there, and that keeps the drawer running straight and not racking as it slides into the clock body. You can see where that is right back in here. Now you'll notice that there's actually a gap between the two pieces of stop. That gap accepts the divider for the clock like that. Now if I tip this down and bring the other side into place, you can see that the clock body has kind of an H shape to it. But the only problem is, is if I apply glue and clamps, there's nothing that keeps that assembly square during the clamping process. So what I'm going to do is make a, a spacer. This one's made out of MDF. And now when I apply a clamp across the top and across the divider, it holds everything aligned. Once the glue dries, you can move on to the next stage of the assembly, and that's to add the top and bottom molding pieces that we made earlier. Now these two pieces are held in place with screws. Now you want to be careful here because driving screws into the thin side pieces could cause a split. To prevent that from happening, it's a good idea to drill pilot holes in the ends of the sides. From there, the final stage of the assembly is to add the top and bottom piece. These are just gl glued in place so that they cover up the screw holes. They're set so that it's flush at the back and centered from side to side. Once you have all the parts put together, the clock body is ready to take the clock face. Well, Dave, now that we've got the outer case of the clock complete, we can turn our attention to the inside. That's right. We need to make this mitered frame that holds the glass 
and the movement gets installed in this support piece. Now, speaking of movement, we need to mention that this clock uses a battery-powered quartz movement. They're inexpensive and really easy to install. And don't forget, we also need to build and install a small drawer. Oh, that's right. So why don't I head over the bench and get started? As Dave mentioned earlier, there's a mitered frame here that holds the glass in the clock. Now, the frame fits into the opening just like that. And as you can see, it sits a little proud. Now, the frame consists of some narrow pieces that I ripped a width over the table saw, and then I routed a small round over here on the inside edge and on the outside edge. Now the back side of the frame pieces have a small rabbit cut in them, and that's to accept the glass. And the glass fits right in the frame, just like that. But we still need a way to hold the glass in place. And that's the job of these small pieces of quarter round or glass stop. Now, the thing is that routing and cutting small pieces like this can be a challenge. So, the solution is to start with an oversized blank like I've got here, and then route a round over on this edge, and then another round over on this edge, and then I can head over to the table saw and rip the stop free. Using a zero clearance insert, I start by putting the workpiece down with the rounded edges against the table saw table. Then I make one pass, flip the piece around, and make another pass. Then I readjust the fence to cut the pieces free. Just make sure they fall safely to the waist side of the blade. After ripping the pieces free, all that's left is to miter the ends to length, and then you can install them just like that. And now all you have to do is tack them in place with a pin or some glue. Well, now we're ready to install the movement. As I said earlier, the movement is battery powered, it's inexpensive and very easy to install. It just has to go through a support piece like this. Now the support consists of two sides and a plywood front. And I've also gone ahead and installed the clock face. So to install the movement, I'll just slip it through the back. And then there's a tiny little washer here and a brass nut that fit over the post. Just like that. And now I'm ready to install the hands. Oh, there, that's done. Now I can just slip the whole support unit into the clock. There we go. Now all I have to do is drop the plywood back in place, turn the turn buttons. There we go. Now I'm ready to add the drawer. Well, with the clock body done, there's only one thing left to do, and that's add the small drawer that fits at the bottom. Now, there's only a few parts, so it's easy to make. You do need a little bit of machine work. You need to cut grooves in the back, in the sides, and the front to receive the plywood bottom. The front also gets a pair of dados that the sides will fit into. Once that's done, it's an easy matter to put the drawer together. Everything just fits right in place. Add a little bit of glue, and that drawer is ready to go. So once the glue in the drawer dries, we're all ready to go ahead and finish this clock. Now I've left the drawer out, of course, but also the frame, and I'm even gonna go ahead and remove the clock movement. That way, I can get color and protection on all the surfaces inside and out. Now the curly maple looks a little bit plain right now, we really want to highlight that wood grain. We're going to do that with an aniline dye. This one comes as a powder. You just mix it with some water, and it's all ready to go. You can see that once we add that dye and then wipe on a couple of coats of finish, that curly maple figure really pops, and it looks great. So all that's left to do is glue in the frame. Just slips right in. Then we'll add a brass knob to the drawer, slide it in place, and this little clock is all set to take its place on the mantle. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, 
plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides, plus we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts. All fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.